All right, hello and welcome to part 10 or 11, I'm not sure, of my Hotline Miami in Unity tutorial. Today we are doing, it was player dying in play health, so if I just show you, boop, yep, die, you press R, it restarts. Uh, yeah, so you just kill him, get punched. Uh, the reason there's a second uh, gun there is just because I only have that with the sprite because this was used to my of a game which doesn't have weapon selection, just enemies get like one gun. And yeah, you can just shoot through walls because I've not quite thought this through and died. So yeah, you can just start that. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to do first, this is just bugs that for work once. Ignore them, all right, ignore them. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to do first was just to show, actually no, I'll do that at the end because I, I was just wondering if, I uh, didn't really show putting things on the game object, so like, I'd just go through and show you what went where, just as a in case anyone didn't get it. But yeah, okay, so basically a couple of first thing first is the player health script. So it just uses the GUI scaling code like we did before. It has just the sprite for the dead player, the same one by one black texture that's just used for the background text style and the scaling stuff. It also has a static boolean, which is basically says, is the player dead? Uh, what Basically, what static means is that dead will be the same throughout every instance of the player class. So if you had, like, I know you wouldn't, but if you had, like, 100 players, it'd all be the same. So by doing this, we can just have... Uh, I'll show you on the scroll controller. So you can see how I can just reference playerhealth.dead rather than having to get the player health object off the player. It sort of does that, basically. And since we've only got one player health, it'll always... Fuck off, train! Sorry. Wait for that to go. So basically, it's one instance of dead, which I can reference without having to find the script, because it's only going to be once. So, yeah, I'll just keep going through player. Basically, it checks if dead is true, which is set by when the bullet it's hit the one. Basically, uh, dead is set to true when the player is either hit by a boolean, boolean bullet even, or or is melee attacked by an enemy. Here, here. Oh, where is it? If player, if it's dead, not dead. Yeah, basically, it just does that, and when it's attacked, it'll attack the player. Where is it actually in here? No, it's under attack. Sorry, I was just looking at the wrong place. So you can see it sets player has player player health dot dead to true when it's attacked, and the same happens in bullet here, which then sets dead to true, so it kills the player. And basically, what this does is disables all the things, but it has to do it in a specific order. So first thing it does is checks that the player is animated. I don't know why that is there actually. It doesn't really need to be, but oh well. It doesn't matter. It gets all the components from the player that it needs to stop. So player animate, movement, rotation to cursor, attacking, and the legs direction. It'll drop the player weapon. It'll just set the sprites of the legs to null, so they're completely invisible. Then it'll disable the legs so they can't be changed and the legs won't appear. Then it'll stop the legs rotating to the direction you are. I've just spat all over my screen, that's fun. Uh, then it just sets the torso to sprite to dead and then stops the player animation script. Then the rotating script is disabled, the weapon animate attacking is disabled. What's PM? PM is the player movement, so it stops it moving and it disables the collider off the player. Now we've got, and then. If you press R, it'll use the scene manager, which you need to import Unity Engine dot scene management. Otherwise, you won't be able to access these methods. And this has changed since like previous versions of Unity. So before it'd be application dot load, but now it's scene manager dot load scene. And what this does, it just reloads the current scene. It gets the name of it and then just provides it to load scene, so it can find out this level to load. And that's pretty much it. It does that if the player is dead and you've pressed R. But before it does that, you have to re-enable all the stuff on the player because it doesn't like reload the entire thing into memory. It just resets it to the start, what it was at the start. It like 
I'm not sure why how it does that, but it's quite useful for what it does because I suppose it'd be more efficient. But yeah, basically, revive player is just the inverse of kill player, where it'll re-enable all the things that were there, but it doesn't like reset the sprites to null. So I've just got rid of that. So I see you can get rid of that. And re-enables the collider, sets it to dead. I don't think I changed the time. No, and then basically it has the GUI code. So. It's got the OS scaling stuff, which was the same as in the score controller. So you can see it's all the same, just for scaling to whatever the window size is that, or your screen size if you're on full screen. And it'll, basically it checks if dead's true, it'll just draw the background texture and press say, press right, press R to restart in the same GUI style, because just set that up manually. And yeah, it's just the last little line. So as you can see, I should probably take this off. I'm going to do it uh, not on full screen and stop displaying them because they annoy me. Basically, die. And it just, they have stopped. So you can see how all the stuff's disabled, even not the player health, though. Because that still need. if you disabled that, you wouldn't be able to see press R for restart. So you got to keep that on. Uh, yeah, so press R, press R, it restarts. All right, uh, what else? There is a couple of things on the enemy. So attack. So that's that. I've already shown you how it attacks. This is not actually relevant. No, that's the wrong script. I wanted. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, enemy AI is what I wanted. Basically, it checks if the player is dead. Then it'll call. Or if it. Oh, sorry. If the player isn't dead, it'll do the movement, player detect, and can find weapon. Uh, but if it isn't dead, if the player is dead. It won't call any of these. It'll just stop the end player animating, so it'll like freeze them all while uh, until the player restarts. So that's basically it. Uh, I don't know if I don't know. I don't think it matters anything else because I don't think I need these actually. So I'll just remove those because now I've got that one thing that I was doing. So that can go. That can go. That can go. Uh, there was player alive check, which is not actually used anymore, I don't think. So I can get rid of that. Just ignore that. Hopefully no bugs have shown up. Uh, yep, let's check everything works now. Yep, dead. Let's have to restart. Hey, press down. We're done. That's pretty much it. So yeah, uh, is there anything else I've not shown you? Uh, there's a little thing on here on the score controller which just basically changes the score to say you died rather than the actual score because you don't get score if you don't if you die pretty much. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh yeah. So that's pretty much it for the uh, player health code. I'm gonna show you now the just the basically how things are set up on game object wise just in case you needed some help with that. I probably should do this every time I change something, but first tutorial series so. Kind of new to it. So basically, the camera has camera follow player, camera rotate effect. Simple, you know that. Uh, player has the player movement, rotate the cursor, uh, player animate, circle collider 2D, weapon attack, and player health scripts. And it's got the tag player on the layer player because we were doing that for the ray casting collision mask thing. Game controller just has. Object manager, sprite container, and score controller. And it's got, that is the same GUI style for both of the score controller and the player health stuff. That is just the objects, the, these, the arcade machines. This is the gun, so any weapon will just have the weapon tag. Uh, weapon pickup, so it'll have that, and it'll have a name which you can get a sprite for. And if it's a gun, or I'm, I'm not implemented ammo yet, I'll need to do that. Oh, and I have the same, I'll just go show you a wall. Really simple walls. Literally just an object, wall, wall tag, box collider 2D, rigid below collider 2D. These needs needs to have one of these just so it can tell that the collisions it needs to have a rigid body needs to be kinematic so it's not affected by physics but has continuous collision detection so it can tell when something collides with it enemies enemies need to have the enemy attack script enemy tag layer on people uh, enemy eye weapon controller script 
an enemy anime and original TV, and both this and the player. The player has uh, its legs, which is basically just the leg direction and a sprite renderer that's on a lower ordering layer to the torso. And this is basically just when you've got the uh, Mac 10 sprite or whatever, that's where the bullet will spawn. That's just attached to the player, and you assign that manually with the into the uh, weapon attack script just for where one handed things will spawn. That's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, and what else? Yeah, the, they, the enemies have the same for where their Mac 10 will spawn. And leg sprites, theirs just like follow the. Uh, theirs just follow whatever direction they're facing so they don't need a leg direction script. That's pretty much it, actually. It wasn't too bad for one. I'm going to listen to Pogposition and ignore my coursework. So, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. And go play my game on Itch.io, loud or quiet. The demo -y bit is still up there after the update. And next time, I think I'll be showing you how to make levels. And I'll be giving you the sprite sheet for it, because it took me some time working out how to use it exactly. But the method I have is quite good for it. It'll be different to this because this is just placing individual bits manually, which is a bit efficient, inefficient, and a bit ugly. So it'll be better than that and it'll look really good, trust. Alright, bye.